In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Data Hub WebView, primarily from the perspective of an operator. We're going to see how to launch Data Hub WebView and how it in turn works with the Cogent Data Hub. In particular, we're going to be running off of a demonstration cloud server. Uh, I'm also going to illustrate how we can use the data PID or PID controller simulator to generate real-time process data and it's that process data that we will be using inside Data Hub WebView. Uh, we're going to see how Silverlight enables very high quality graphics which is definitely one of the reasons that we chose to build Data Hub WebView on the uh, Silverlight platform and we're going to observe how a number of controls and symbols are used to create uh, very quickly create HMI pages that represent real-world scenarios. Since much of what we are going to uh, discuss and review is going to be based upon some data from that PID controller that I was mentioning, I just want to take a couple seconds and review that data with you. So I'm going to open the Data PID program, which is uh, one of two programs, the other being DataSim, that ship with the Cogent Data Hub and with Data Hub WebView. And the Data PID program is, I'm just going to expand that, the Data PID program is a standard PID controller that allows us to play with values of set point, manipulated variable, and process variable. So you can see here that the red line, which is a square wave, is our set point. And right now, that set point is automatically changing every five seconds. The MV uh, the blue line is the manipulated value and the PID controller program attempts to manipulate or to change the values of MV thereby manipulating the output which is PV, the green line, such that PV attempts to stabilize around the set point. So I'm going to start just by manually overriding the set point and I'm going to apply those changes setting the set point to a value of 75 and so you can see that uh, because this is no longer changing every five seconds, you'll see that the process variable is going to stabilize right around 75. And of course, if I drop the value of our set point down to 15, you'll notice that very quickly the blue line drops way down and that pulls the output down, the green line PV, and again that stabilizes right around our set point value. So this PID controller program is used uh, throughout these training videos to illustrate uh, process data. And of course we're doing that because for the purposes of my demonstration, I do not actually have a uh, production process control or, or manufacturing system uh, tied to our demonstration pages. So we're using this PID controller instead. I'm just going to set this back to auto mode and uh, every five seconds is okay. So I will apply those changes and then I will just minimize the PID controller. And I'm also going to open up data sim, but I don't need to review that. I'll just minimize that as well. So we're ready to start our demonstration and uh, normally if I wanted to run the Cogent Data Hub locally I would uh, of course start it uh, but we're not going to actually run the Cogent Data Hub locally instead we're going to run a variation or a version that's running off a cloud server and so I'm going to navigate to that cloud server cloud.cogentdatahub.com and I'll just hit enter on that now this cloud server is actually running in uh, North Carolina and uh, I'm running in Canada so while I don't actually expect any kind of latency depending upon your proximity to uh, the cloud server in North Carolina in the United States and depending upon your connection speed to the internet you may or may not experience uh, some latency and that might be expected in, in, in certain situations. So you'll notice that what's happened is that I've automatically been presented with a start page and uh, we can set up our pages to automatically uh, bypass the login and we'll talk about that in another video and, and take us directly into the uh, start page and the reason for this is that we may want to create an interface that is specifically for our users or our operators and that only allows them to work within run mode and that's what we're in right now run mode the other mode is design mode and we'll talk about that in other videos 
run mode allows operators to navigate between pages and to work with gauges and charts but it does not allow the user to manipulate or to edit the pages and and so right now that's ac that's exactly what we're doing we're working with run mode so let's get started with our demos I'm going to start by clicking on circular gauges and this page illustrates some of the more common uh, gauges that we're going to work with inside the uh, data hub web view application and and you can see that right now this uh, gauge up in the top left corner with the big yellow arrow provides connectivity to the cogent data hub and it's connected to our set point and I, I just want to clarify one thing you'll recall that we had our PID controller over here and I want to make sure that you understand this PID controller is not actually the one that's in use right now because of course and I can actually close that and exit that because we're actually using our cloud uh, server from North Carolina so please understand that there is an instance of the cogent data hub the data PID simulation program and there is an instance of the data sim simulation program running down in North Carolina and so that's where that data is coming from so you'll notice that right now as the set point changes the other gauges for for PV and for MV are also changing of course if I manually manipulate this uh, this gauge you can see the arrows also moving on the other gauges and controls within data hub web view can often be set to be read only from an operator perspective or they can be set as read write so you'll see that this gauge right here as well as this three indicator radio gauge over here have been set up as manipulatable and I can drag the marker on this gauge and other things follow whereas I cannot change the needle in this uh, orange gauge and I cannot change it on the other so that's uh, those gauges can be made interactive by the uh, page designer uh, actually one other thing I'm just going to go back to circular gauges again one other thing that I want to clarify is that all of this data that you see here the set point the process variable etc this is all running through the cloud server so every time I drag or set a new set point that data value is being sent to or submitted down to the cloud server it's generating new values for MV and for PV and those values are being reflected here on these other gauges so this is real-time data and just to further illustrate that I'm gonna hit the restore button on this browser and I'm going to open a second instance of that page and you can see it here and it's important to understand the only thing that these pages have in common well aside from using data hub web view and being on the same page both of these are using the cloud server for cogent data hub which means the only thing these pages really have in common is an internet connection and yet you'll notice that as I drag the arrow on the left side of the screen the values over here in these gauges on the right side are changing and that's again because those values are going down to the clown server and then being brought back and reflected here so this really is uh, real-time data over the internet I don't need that page anymore I'm just gonna close that and uh, maximize and I'm now ready to uh, review another page so I'll just click on page index and uh, let's have a look at some of the notification type controls that we have available uh, this page is called notifications and you can see that we've got uh, a flashing light and we've got high low indicators that change colors depending upon uh, various indicators and rising falling and uh, I can turn a light on or I can turn it off this advanced light is uh, configured with four different state conditions and so you can sh see that I can change that from uh, uh, you know green through various colors and I can get it to flash and I can configure it so that the uh, speed of flashing is is uh, different you'll also notice that I've got over on the right hand side various symbols and, and shapes that I can work with and again those can be made to uh, to, f to change color and to, to flash and uh, one of the things I just want to point out here 
uh, is the quality of the graphics that we get with Silverlight. I'm just going to jump up to my zoom buttons and you'll notice that I can zoom out or I can zoom in and I can zoom actually all the way into uh, well up to 800 percent and you'll notice that we've got very good quality graphics with uh, Microsoft Silverlight and, and that's definitely one of the reasons that we chose this platform. I'm just going to click on uh, Zoom Fit here and uh, the Zoom Fit is a, a really nice option when you're saving your pages because you'll notice that as I change the size of my browser window and uh, I'll just do that dynamically the page will continue to maintain its best fit regardless of the screen, uh, regardless of the browser uh, size that I make it. And this is a nice option for your operators because you may not be able to anticipate what screen resolution or what size display they've got. So saving the page with Zoom Fit makes it uh, easy to accommodate whatever resolution they've got. One other thing I'll point out while I'm on this page is how we have, uh, the, this is a symbol for example, you, these are symbols over here, and there are over 4,000 symbols that are available inside Data Hub WebView and I'll give you an example of some of those in just a second. Of course in order to create uh, pages that allow the user to interact, not only do we need gauges, but we also need the standard kinds of controls available with any other kind of a design application. So we've got uh, radio buttons, we've got check boxes, we've got advanced check boxes that can be configured to maintain different states and change controls. We've got a, a simple slider that can either be configured to uh, interact with real-time data or maybe just to provide your own input and uh, of course a text entry field so you can see that the text entry field can be configured to uh, format with a certain number of decimal places and this one is actually configured to require values between 0 and 100 so you'll notice that if I go over 100 that text box changes color and if I try to hit enter which I'm doing now, you'll see that value has not been accepted and uh, I obviously need to enter a valid value in order to uh, hit enter on that. I'm going to go back here and just load one other page. I'll load the uh, linear gauges page just to show you a few more examples of some of the gauges that we may want to use. And So we've got thermometers and, and horizontal gauges and progress bars and and again these gauges can be configured to either be interactive you'll notice that I can change the set point or drag this handle here and as I do that the other gauges on the page are changing I can do the same thing with this quadrant style gauge up and down but you'll notice that I can also choose to create gauges that do not interact uh, provide interaction. So I cannot, for example, manipulate that vertical linear gauge and this top sweep gauge is just ignoring my attempt to grab the arrow. I can also add background images to any control and so you can see this uh, house has been added behind the semi semicircular gauge and again that can be done for any control. And just a minute ago I mentioned symbols, so let me open up our Symbol Factory page. Symbol Factory is a product from a company called Software Toolbox and we have partnered with Software Toolbox to provide over 4,000 symbols available to Data Hub WebView and, and so you can see that on this page there are some examples of the different kinds of symbols that are uh, uh, available. Um, these symbols can be added to your page by simply adding the symbol control. We have a single symbol control that is capable of hosting any of these 4,000 symbols and each symbol control provides the ability to configure the uh, control with an input and then the control will respond based on those input values to produce various behaviors like colors and rotation and, and, and blinking and, and progress and we'll see some of those as we as we see uh, some of our other demo pages. Just before we do that I'll throw, show, show you one other kind of page. This uh, trend chart page is showing us uh, 
the ability to track historical data. And I'll just see if I can do this again. I want you to notice over here on the right hand side of the screen as I navigate back to the page index and then back to trend charts. You'll notice just as I initialize the trend chart page, just a few of the data points initially render, then all of a sudden the rest of the history displayed. This trend chart is taking advantage of a feature in the Cogent Data Hub called the Data Historian. And the Data Historian tracks historical values for data points to provide exactly this kind of behavior. And of course, trending is a very important behavior of, of any HMI system. So the reason that we need to provide gauges and input controls and, and symbols and, and uh, controls for notification is obviously to build a page that really represents the industrial process control or manufacturing system that is relevant to our particular business. So you can see here this tank level demonstration page has uh, you know standard controls for, for manipulation like we saw before. So here's a slider control which is tied to our set point and as I move our set point up and down you can see that the uh, MV and PV changes and and some of these controls including the tank with a cutaway as well as our pump here these are symbols and you can see that this cool pump here for example is specifically configured to change color according to when the this gauge goes into one of its defined color ranges and so as I move my set point up into a higher area you can see that the cool pump has now changed color to red to reflect where that needle is and it's flashing to draw attention for the operator and uh, we've got other controls and thermometers and, and gauges and all of those symbols and controls not only provide the ability to interact with our page but also to let the operator know when there's a problem and when a particular uh, control or system needs attention and let me just go back and have a look here at the final page which is our water treatment page and this demo page is probably our most complicated demonstration page you can see that we've got well, there are actually over 100 symbols that are used in this page. We've got various tanks. Uh, each and every pipe here is actually a symbol. So I'm just going to zoom in on some of these. And, you, and, and as I scroll around, you can see that every curved pipe, every straight pipe, every valve, shutoff valve, each of these are symbols that can be manipulated and controlled and we've got of course uh, our trend chart and again as I turn off auto SP you should see that our system basically starts to stabilize uh, of course I can turn pumps off and uh, as I you know adjust our set point again our, our tanks and valves start to uh, demonstrate progress so the purpose of data hub web view is to allow a page designer to create pages with symbols and controls that allow the operator to interact with our process under control. So in this demonstration we've seen several pages that uh, demonstrate Data Hub WebView from the perspective of the operator, something that we call run mode.